Okay, this is the second inverse function question we're going to do in the workshop on Saturday. And here we go. In the diagram below, there's a graph. f of x equals ax squared. Oh, that's this graph here. f, there it is. f of x equals ax squared. It is drawn in the interval, but x is greater than or less than 0. So there's a restriction. That's what that is. It's only x is negative or equal to 0. That's what we're looking at here. Now, the inverse is drawn as well, the inverse function. And that makes sense because if there was a line y equals x, it looks like it would be going right through the middle. And it's a reflection about the line y equals x. So that makes sense. It's the inverse. Um, P is a point on F, minus 6 and minus 12. Uh, and R is a point on the inverse function. Okay. Is the inverse function a function? Is this a function here? Is that a function? Motivate your answer. Well, it sure is, because for every x value, there's only one y value. You could take a vertical line and pass it through here. You could take a vertical line. I'll make it actually, let's make a vertical line. There's a vertical line, a kind of dotted line. But if you pass that vertical dotted line through there, oops, that didn't work so nice. Let's see if I can grab onto it now. I did. Look, it only hits once. For every x value, there's only one y value on that inverse function going here. That's why it's a function. Now, r is a reflection of p. Well, if it's a reflection of p in the line y equals x, um, a reflection of this, the line y equals x, it's the inverse of it. So all we have to do to find r is switch. r is minus 12 is x, and y is minus 6. There it is. r is minus 12 and minus 6 on the memo. There we go. That's all there is to that. Now calculate the value of a. Well, we don't know what a is, but we know we've got a point on f. We know that x is minus 6. So if we go minus 6 squared, we know that the y value, which is f of x, the function of x, if I put in minus 6 for x, I get minus 12 out for y. And that's what the thing looks like. f of x equals ax squared. Instead of x, you put in minus 6. Instead of y or f of x, you put in minus 12. That's 36. And then you divide both sides. Minus 12 divided by 36 is the same as minus 1 over 3. So a is minus 1 over 3. That means your function is y equals minus 1 over 3 times x squared. That's the function. And the last question that didn't print out very nice on the sheet is determine the inverse function. Determine what the equation is for f of minus 1. Well, if we're going to turn, determine the inverse, let's look at it. First, we get the function y equals minus 1 third x squared. Then the first thing we do is we switch x and y. Now we want to make y the subject. We divide both sides by negative a third, or in other words, multiply by negative 3. Um, if you divide uh, 1x by negative a third, anyways, you multiply both sides by negative 3. It cancels here. You get just y squared. Now, the last step, you've got y squared equals minus 3 x. Anyways, you should be able to see you multiply both sides by negative 3. It's going to cancel here. 1 third of 3 is just 1, 1. 1 third of negative 3 is just 1. Now you take the square root of both sides. And the square root of y, there's always two answers when you take the square root of a square like this, the plus and the negative answer of minus 3x. Well, that's your, that's your, um, inverse function, the inverse of this parabola. But you don't want both branches. You need a restriction on x. And if you look over here, oh, it's x is less than 0. You don't want the part that goes uh, over up here where x is. Anyways, you need this part here. You need the part that's negative down here, not the positive part. So that's why you put minus root minus 3x. And x, the restriction you have to be on, you want the x to be less than 0. And that will give you this part. Whoops. That will give you this part that's down here. 
So we want just x is less than or equal to zero. That's the restriction. And there you go. There's question B done.